Hey guys, what's happening? So, got an actual 3D printer fix. Um, this one, I already started working on it, I forgot to start filming. But this one's a Photon Mono 6K. It's actually a really nice uh, SLA printer. I think it's SLA. Um, yeah, the one with the LCD. And, uh, yeah, the, the resin printer. Alright, I mean, I don't really work on a lot of these. I think I've worked like on two or three over the last like four or five years, at least when they start coming start come out. Um, they never really were that popular because they're, they're, I mean, they're awesome printers. They, they print awesome, but they're extremely messy. So, um, this one came in, the, uh, I mean, the guy only used it a couple times. And the issue is the Z-axis stopped moving. And it's really, really, really stiff. Like, even the, you know, like the, what's it called? The, uh, locking, uh, what's it, I forget the name of that thing, but the locking thing here. Like on every 3D printer, the um, you know, lead screw uh, nut. But this is a very well constructed printer. I mean, they use anti backlash nut. I mean, look at the size of these linear rails. I mean, that's that's pretty high quality. So, I mean, they definitely use some high quality parts in this machine. Um, one of the issues is like the stepper motor. Is I think it's one of those kind that's directly attached to the to the motor. Like the rod goes through the motor. The lead screw actually goes through the motor. It's part of the motor. Um, so it's going to be a headache getting this off because I think resin got in the, in the motor. Uh, but so right now the Z axis doesn't move. I mean, I can tell why it's being overloaded. I mean, it's a, it's a NEMA 17 motor, and there's an insane amount of force you got to put on here to turn it. Like, I can't even turn it by hand. You know, with, with a typical 3D printer, I mean, it's just doing this. I can do that by hand, you know. And this should be the same because it's just a NEMA 17 motor. I mean, it's a little bit, little bit larger as NEMA 17 motor, but not. You know, it's about this size right here. I can just about turn it by hand. So, um, it's... Let me turn this thing around. All right, so I'm guessing I have to take this whole tower thing off here. And I should be able to... There's a... That's a NEMA 17 motor right there. Um, yeah, I can see resin right down on the motor. So, that's definitely not a good sign. Um... I should probably check the, make sure there's no resin on top of the, the, the LCD either, you know. But yeah, it's, there's resin on everything in here, so. Um, yeah, definitely not the easiest printer to take apart, for sure. Yeah, I wish there was an easier way I can get, get the motor out, because but if it has a direct shaft on it, you know, how am I going to, I have to pull the, the, what's it called, the tower off here. The Z-axis tower thing right there. Yeah, there's even resin on the antenna right there. Um, okay, I forgot to even show you, they actually used a uh, anti-vibration coupler in there too. So they did actually, like I said, the, the anti-backlash uh, nut. So they did go through some steps to make this thing pretty awesome, you know? That's not, I mean, look at the board too. I think it was like an $800 printer probably. So somewhere in that range, so it's definitely high on the higher end. All right, so uh, it's a pretty nice little optical sensor here too. So pretty impressed with the build quality. Um, so I gotta take these two X Allen nuts off here. I'm thinking that I can get loose this enough and just hopefully pull it off the top here. Hopefully this will save any you guys that have one of these printers. It looks like there's two nuts above here that are in front of the larger Allen that are back here. These still won't come off. All right, so now that I have this off, I should be able just to pull this forward, but then, you know, they had this anti-backlash on there, really, really tight. I mean, you don't, it's not a CNC machine. <laughs> you know, it's cool, but because it's not a CNC machine, you're not really, you know, it's not pulling the same kind of load, you know, I mean, you're not moving axis, you're not cutting the material, it's, you're 3D printing, you're laying material down. Well, they're definitely not making it easy, so I'm thinking to get this rod around out there because I need to figure out like what's up with this thing. Dude, it's so stiff. I mean, I could just put some lube in there, but that wouldn't be the I need to figure out what's inside there. Um, you know, to make it just a long-term long -term fix. But yeah, I definitely see resin here. It's most likely there's going to be some 2 point family motor screws holding the motor in, but I don't know if I can we weasel around this way. Most likely I'm going to take this top cover off too. 
Arg. Yeah, I'm sure this is a pretty common problem. So what they should probably do is design this a better way. So in case you actually have this problem, it would be easier to get the motor out. Because a lot, I mean, because this thing is not sealed up here. I mean, I could tell this has to be a resin problem because of the 2.5 millimeter. Those were filled, the pockets were filled resin. So resin is just going to go straight down into here and I'm guessing it went right into the shaft. All right, so hopefully uh, Photon is watching this video. I mean, there's not a lot of people that actually advertise that they fix 3D printers. And you can't return this thing to them because they're back in China. Uh, you know, if this thing's like a couple months old, you're not going to get a return from Amazon, depending where you buy it. So they need to make this a little bit easier to take apart. Because I had to take the, it was easier to go through the back, but still, it's even hard. I need to get some motor out so I can get it thoroughly cleaned. But it's... I don't know, man. What are they? What are they thinking? I mean, it's an awesome printer, but it's man, it's not easy to get to or work on. You know, if you have a problem. All right. So if I got this thing off enough to where I had to loosen this up just to get past that USB port, extremely difficult. Um, not extremely difficult, but very annoying. All right. So now you have to figure out focus on this thing. Um, yeah, I would definitely give this thing a good grade for build quality. This is what I was talking about. They use actually like the vibration dampener for the motor. I mean, they don't have to do that, but they, they do a lot of things they don't have to do, but they do to make the print quality better. So that's you can tell the difference between a high-end printer and a low-end printer. This is what I was talking about. See how the shaft goes all the way through the motor? The, the, the motor, the shaft is part of the motor, but it's it's stuck in there. Can't even turn it really. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, this is when you actually need to have a seal. You don't want the... I mean, obviously I can tell the resin went down in there, and that's what you don't want. You don't want resin to get somewhere inside the motor. So it just followed the shaft all the way down to the side of the motor. I don't feel like there's step, separate motors. You can actually take them apart with this ring. Some, some you can, some you can't. Some require have like a like a, like a C-clip, like with the snap ring in there. So try not to force it, because if, if you have to force it, then there's probably could be a snap ring in there. All right, so that's the motor taken apart. Just the top part comes out. And uh, so I need to figure out, I now know that the, the stiffness is actually inside here, this front bearing. Yeah, because I can hardly, it's really stiff. So the issue is up in here in the front. All right, so if you see those little black things, these are actually, they put tension on the actual uh, motor to make it sit so it doesn't rock back and forth. So it kind of, it kind of picks up slack. All right, so this front bearing is totally locked up. So I don't know if it was spinning inside the case. Yeah, I have a feeling that it was spinning maybe inside the case. So instead of the bearing spinning, it was actually just spinning inside the, the aluminum housing. Right, what so I'm looking I for is my ultrasonic cleaner on. So diesel is an extremely good solvent. Oh, that sucks. My ultrasonic cleaner stopped working. Great. Got anything to fix. All right. I um, guess that's why it's called the FinTech Repair Shop. <laughs> I'm always fixing stuff. All right. Non-stop repairs. All right. So I'm going to let this soak for a little bit. It does actually, it just, you got to let it free up. I might even hit my hit it with my torch to try to break up some of that resin. Yeah, because this is not, I mean, if this was like a normal motor, I would just grab a bearing from a different motor, but... Um, yeah, it's the size of this lead screw. I think it's an eight millimeter lead screw, so not as easy to find. But not the. I mean, I could always get a new motor, but I mean, I'm, this thing was hardly even used as printer, so I'm sure the bearing's fine. It's just clogged up with uh, resin. All right, so I'm gonna hook this up to my drill and hold on to the bearing and spin my drill, and hopefully I can kind of work whatever's in there out of there. Yeah, obviously it's not a sealed bearing, <laughs> or the the stuff never would have gotten there to begin with. All right, so I finally got the motor freed up. Uh, enough to, uh, I mean, it, it's not perfect, but it's, yeah, it's, actually, it's going to be hard even just getting, if I had to replace a bearing, just push, push the pull the bearing off this uh, rod. Um, all right, so I, I should, this should actually work now. Um, I got to put it back together. But yeah, it's, now we're going to try to get the screen protector back on, so we're going to have to order some new screen protectors. Um, yeah, because once you take them off, it's impossible to get, like, the bubbles out. It's so difficult. Plus, there's a ton of resin underneath it, too. And there's even re resin in the screens, man. I mean, what's funny is that it doesn't work at the lower corner. Well, sometimes it works. 
Wow, look at that LCD. Just caked in resin here too. Um, I wonder if I can pop that off and get the digitizer off of there. All right, so I'm going to try to lift this digitizer up. I mean, this thing is basically, a, you can't even use it. So, um, let's see if I can get this separated, maybe. Carefully, though. All right, so I was able to get this half separated really carefully, but then I'd hit it with alcohol. Might not be perfect, but, I mean, the problem is the digitizer is getting all messed up because it's actually, there's a layer of opposite resin in there. All right, so I was able to get it separated, cleaned out. Don't know if it's gonna work or not, but I'll try. All right, so let me give you my final thoughts on the photon. Um, actually, I gave it back to the customer. Um, so we're able, we're, we're, I got the thing unstuck, but the issue is since the screen was bad and you can't find the screen anywhere, we couldn't test it. So I'm not really a big fan of the resin printers. Um, they're just so messy. Uh, they're, they're a lot of work. Um, all right, so that's the end of that video. And uh, I've been fixing 3D printers like daily. So, all right.